There are hundreds of reasons that I could give you why teaching maths is brilliant. But here's just one. I can tell this is a pretty intellectual audience, but in case you're a wee bit rusty, this beautiful symbol here, this Greek symbol, uh, is inextricably linked with a number, right? A number that is constant, right? And that number starts 3.14159265358979323846264626, and it goes on and on and on. So, a couple of things to think about there. First of all, it's not very big. I mean, it's less than four. It's a wee, you know, a wee bit more than three, but it's less than four, so it's, it's quite a small number. But also, it's, it's a really long number, right? In fact, it's, it's, it's infinitely long, and it just keeps going and going and going, and there's, there's not a sort of point at which a nice pattern develops. And you might think that's a reason to say, well, forget about that, I'm not going to look at uh, this number. But actually, that's a really, really neat part of pi. Because if you think about it, that means that somewhere in there, I can find... Uh, your phone number, which might or might not be a successful chat of wine. Um, <laughs> in, somewhere in there is your date of birth. And in fact, I was thinking about this on Tuesday when I was, I was putting together this talk. I was thinking, if you converted every letter into numbers, then every word's in there. And in fact, see this TED talk that I'm giving right now, it's already been encrypted in Pi. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and so, at school, uh, with my students, I like to, well, we'd not just estimate pi, not just use it to calculate things like the area of a circle and circumference of a circle, but also to celebrate it. And the day for doing that is the 14th of March. And some of you will already have figured out why that is. But um, if you're from America, then the way that you write the 14th of March is 3.14. So you've got the sig three significant figures of pi. And so every year on Pi Day, folk do all sorts of different things. And so I thought I'd just share a few of the, the last few years of Pi Day uh, in our classroom, things that we'd been up to. So 2012, that was, uh, uh, that was the sound of Pi we were interested in. And for that, I needed to consume uh, 10 uh, bottles worth of uh, iron brew, right? And uh, what we did was, uh, we had these 10 bottles in a row, right? And um, I know you're thinking, you can already think of a song that goes like that, right? But this is a different song. And uh, so you've got these 10 bottles, and each of them is assigned a digit. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And what we did was we, we filled them uh, with water to different heights. Uh, and... <laughs> Um, and what we did was use a wee iTunes uh, app which allowed us to tune these different bottles to different notes. So zero uh, would correspond to the, the note C, and then one would be D, and you with me? Yeah, there's so, we've lost some people, I can tell, but that's okay. Um, and so what we would do is we would just say, well, let, let's, what does it sound like? So we need that uh, pi goes 3.141, so we'd have a three, one. Four, one, five, nine. And we, we worked out what that melody would sound like. Moving on a year uh, into 2013. And in 2013, well, actually, let's go back a wee bit. August 2012, nothing to do with Pi Day. But I'm driving to school after the summer holidays. And as I'm driving in in my wee rubbishy red car, I notice my mileage is 28,000 miles. And I get to thinking that if my car lasts that long, it'll eventually hit 10,000 pi. 31,415 31, miles, which for me would be quite exciting, right? <laughs> so the next natural question that any sane person asks is, will that happen on pi day next year? <laughs> so, so that's what we, well, I, I put that question to my, my students. Will it happen? And they said, well, why don't, we, why don't we check it out? So what we did was we made a big graph in the classroom, and every Monday I would tell them the mileage. So for some of the kids, the way that they got involved in this was literally taking the mileage and plotting a wee point. It was actually a wee card, but yeah, plotting the point. And what we would do is every week they would, uh, they would come in, Mr. Smith, what's your mileage today? And it seems a bizarre thing to get excited about, but they did, right? So they were plotting them each day. Other kids, they were a wee bit more advanced. They were watching this as it developed, and they thought, right, I can see it's going up and up and up. And they said, well, it sort of levels out there. 
and there. What I mean, why does nothing happen in those those times? So they were already thinking, why does Mr. Smith's car not move during October or during Christmas and New Year? And I, they, they figured it out. I wasn't coming to school. There's no way I was going to use that heap of junk any other time than to get me into work and back. Um, other kids, they were they were saying, well, we know how to work out. It looks, I can kind of see a line through those points. Let's make work out the equation of the, the line of best fit and we can project all we need to know is how many weeks it is, and then we'll be able to work out how close you're going to be, whether you're going to be anywhere near it. So how many weeks was it? 31.4 weeks. That's nothing to do with me, just a complete and utter fluke, but 314, unbelievable. So, so it's uh, the morning of Pi Day, and I get in my car and I drive to work. As I'm coming in the school gates, I look at the mileage. 31,000. Four, that's next. One. Four, well, one mile under. So I said to the kids, sorry guys, we didn't, we didn't quite manage it. But we all piled down into the car park. And at our school, we've got a wee roundabout right in the middle of the car park, right? So what we do is we all go down. Uh, I get a student in the front seat so he can film the, the, the wee mic clock around. And we, we just drive around this thing. Should we go down this way? Back. Back it up a bit. Huh? Back it up a bit. Yeah. They all think we've crashed, right? Ready? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Is it? Look, it's showing any signs. Oh, I just lost them! We lost a pie! Oh, no. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Same year, uh, a wee boy says, um, "Sir, why don't we do? Why don't we create a song about pie? Why don't we create the Pie MCA?" <laughs> I'm just gonna let that thought linger. Actually, recently was uh, the, the New York Museum of Maths. They uh, had a pie song competition, and uh, the, the, for their age category, the Pie MC got selected as the winning song. I got an invite over to New York, and uh, but they only asked me on the Thursday, and it, it, the event was on the Saturday, so I didn't, I didn't manage to go. But that was that was really good. 
So the, the kids aren't just quite excited, excitable and uh, quite, uh, quite enthusiastic, they're also quite nice. So they said to me when it was uh, in 2014, they said, how can we get to do all these things in our classroom or in our school? Is that, is that fair? I mean, what about the other folk that live in Kilmarnock, where we're from? What about the folk in Ayrshire? What about the folk in Scotland? I mean, that's, it seems like they're missing out. Can we not make this year's pie day share the maths? Okay, right, that's their idea, let's go with it. So I put a wee box in the classroom, and the kids were to come up with the best sort of problems, puzzles that they could come up with, bung them in the box, and we would have a look at them. So we, we opened it up after a month, it was tipped them out in the, the desk and had a look through and there were loads of really interesting puzzles. We picked our three favourites and what we did was we got 250 postcards made, the three problems on one side and on the other side it said, eh, by the, if you find this, try the puzzles, send it back to us. And then what we did was we got hundreds of helium balloons and we went outside into the, onto the playing fields, tied these uh, balloons uh, to the puzzles and let them off up into the air and we just waited for them to flood back the responses. <laughs> it was actually only once they were going up in the air that I thought, wait a minute, they're all in English. What happens if they, these go abroad to somewhere that people can't speak the language? What if this ends up in a continent where English is no use? Uh, we didn't need to uh, worry as it turned out. The, the furthest away um, was uh, a response from Kilmores, which if you know Kilmarnock, it's, uh, it's about three miles away. That's, <laughs> and I should say, that's three miles away by car. By balloon, it's a lot shorter. Um, but anyway, that was okay. This year, uh, we decided to do a sort of visual representation of pie. And so what we did was, uh, we decided to make a uh, pie in the skyline, right? Tried to make, decided to make some pie scrapers, if you will. And uh, so we hijacked the school gym hall and we got down there and I had made thousands of these wee bits of buildings, right? And I invited the kids up one at a time uh, and I said, you're we're basically going to make uh, a skyline which represents the, the heights will represent the digits of pi. So you're first, you get a three a three story building. Out you come, we'll attach it to the wall. Right, you're next. I need a space. All right, get to the po the point. Yeah, you need to remember that. Uh, then I need a one story building, a four story building, a one story building, a five story building, and we basically worked our way all the way along the the uh, 150 digits along the, the entire length of this this uh, games hall. Again, uh, I. Lots of the students are really involved. They were the ones who created this. Uh, they were the ones who uh, had some senior pupils who coordinated it all. And one of the boys, Ben, he put together the time lapse video, which shows this being constructed over uh, a good couple of hours. Anyway, it's geeky. It's irrational, but I do love a slice of pie. Thank you very much.